we will discuss the approaches to culture. Uh, welcome back to this video series on culture, sociology of culture. So the first approach towards culture that is very, very common, it has been common throughout history and it is very common. It is becoming more common and one can suspect, one can uh, deduce that it will continue to be a great approach. Uh, a great majority of human beings will have this approach. It is called ethnocentrism. Ethno, you know, you know it is uh, taken from ethnicity, uh, nation, a group based on language or culture. Centrism, when you when you're focused on your own values, your own customs, tradition, your own culture, you, the yardstick of judging other cultures is your own culture and your own cultural values and your beliefs, your cultural beliefs. So if you judge another culture by the yardstick of your own cultural standards, you will find that uh, your culture is superior to other cultures, your culture, and your belief, especially your religion, is justified, is based on truth, righteous, and morally on a high ground compared to other cultures. So this view, uh, which was described first by William Graham Sumner, who is an American sociologist, uh, a pioneering sociologist, uh, he developed this concept and uh, he said, uh, that this concept is mostly regarding the symbolic culture. For example, it is about uh, one's language, one's uh, everybody likes his or her language, uh, their religion, their beliefs, the symbolic part of their culture, their values, their customs, traditions, their norms, especially their values and their social stratification. For example, Pakistan and India, uh, they're always trying to outdo each other. They are fighting over Kashmir. India says that we are terrorist. We say that India is terrorist. Uh, so that is ethnocentrism. And when you judge a culture from your own standards, Xenocentrism is actually, or uh, you can say, the opposite of uh, ethnocentrism. And it was first observed by Kant and Bernite. They thought that uh, it is the wonder, the fetish, the preferences associated with mostly products and goods of other cultures. For example, uh, we do like uh, Italian pizzas, we do like uh, pastas. Uh, lasagna and all these Italian dishes, but we may not like Roman Catholic Church if we're not Italian. Uh, we may like uh, French uh, perfume, uh, but we may not like the French uh, ideals of uh, liberty, uh, especially if you are living in an Eastern country. You may like uh, American movies, uh, action movies, but you may not like uh, American foreign policy, you know. So the fact is, uh, the fact is that uh, xenocentrism is mostly about the material culture and ethnocentrism is mostly about uh, the symbolic culture. Uh, now we come to cultural relativism. And in this approach, it is also an approach of you of looking at other cultures. And uh, in this approach, we try to understand. We don't try to judge, you know. We don't like to judge a culture. Like in ethnocentrism, we like to judge a culture. In uh, xenocentrism, we like to ap appreciate other cultures. But in cultural relativism, it is a concept borrowed from anthropology 
you understand, you try to make sense of why this culture is so different, so weird, why specific uh, uh, norms and values are followed by this culture. For example, a cow, why do the Indians, the Hindus consider cow as their mother? So if we apply the ethnocentric view, you say they are, they are utterly, uh, this is utter rubbish. Uh, this is not quite intelligent. We can say this is stupid. But if we try to uh, apply the cultural relativist approach, so then we start to think, hey, wait a minute, it makes sense. I mean, cows have been important in the history of uh, subcontinent. They give them milk, they give them uh, food, you know, they give them uh, <clears throat> shit as well. And uh, the, the, the shit is actually used to, uh, to build houses so, and also to burn fire. So it is very, uh, and it also fertilizes the soil. So the cow shit is also, who is also very, <clears throat> uh, very, very valuable. Uh, sorry to bring it out. And, uh, but uh, also, since in this valley civilization, uh, the seals used to have cows, the toys used to have cows. So cow is actually a very old companion of Indian civilization. So we can say that uh, if, for example, horses gave rise to the Arab civilization, so we can say, or the Persian civilization, so we can say, or camel gave rise to the Egyptian civilization or the Arab civilization, we can say that cow was very essential for the Indian civilization. So cultural relativism is uh, to understand a culture. So the last approach to culture is cultural pluralism and it is actually the tolerance of other cultures when you accept the right of other cultures to exist beside you you don't agree with those cultures i mean for example uh in in canada it's not necessarily the sikhs uh, there are also christians muslims so so they don't protestants evangelic christians maybe some orthodox as well so they don't necessarily agree with each other but they tolerate they accept the right of other cultures to exist also in islam or in pakistan we say that we are just one pakistani despite the various ethnicities and we say that we are global citizens or we are all muslims or all humans despite our differences thank you very much we will be back with the types of cultures in the coming lectures. Thank you very much.